Build Science 301, a Build Original Series brought to you by Anderson Windows and Doors, Arklin, and Huber Engineered Woods. All right, my friends, welcome back to Build Science 301. In this episode, we're talking about full and ground foundations and crawl spaces. Where do you want to start, Steve? Well, I want to start by getting people to understand. You know, people always talk about crawl spaces and basements, and they think they're this totally different monster. A crawl space is a short basement. That's all it is. It's true. Or a basement is a very deep crawl space. That's it. The physics are exactly the same. Uh -huh. Mother Nature's not up there on her canvas saying, oh, that's a crawl space, let's do this. Or that's a basement, let's do this. She writes a set of laws, they apply. Basement, crawl space, same thing. Yeah, that's right. The detail, pretty standard, right? Foundation wall. Yep. Slab. Footing. Yep. Three pieces. One one caveat would be if you had a crawl space, often this slab is omitted, yep. but the forces are the same. Yeah. Sometimes it's just dirt, open dirt. That's or right. Smaller slab could be. Other a, than a that, things. what Steve just like you said. The dimension on the earth showing on that side, yeah. whether it's a foot or whether it's uh, 20 feet, it's the same physics. It's exactly the same. Yep. So let's look at the challenges. There's quite a bit that's happening here. Um, as far as water, we have water coming in a number of different places. We have the water that comes in the groundwater yeah, that comes down off the building. Certainly more challenging from a water right. perspective. We have the water, because there's a cold joint across here, mm -hmm. meaning that the footing gets cast and then the wall gets cast, so they're not cast together. That's why you have to have this reinforcing in here. Mm -hmm. So that cold joint has the potential to have something go through there. Yep. And then, of course, we have water, groundwater, hydrostatic pressure that's pushing up. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I didn't put on here, and I'd be curious to get your opinion on, Matt, there's a lot of people that say, well, the capillary action of water here. In my 30 years, I've seen it once, but it wasn't necessarily because of the groundwater or the water from under the slab. It was water coming in here and saturating the system. How oh, interesting. And having it come up because mm -hmm. there was a roof problem. But there's a lot of people that like to put in water stops here or something across the top to break off capillary, capillary action. action. And I mean, me personally, I don't want to go against everybody in the building science world, but me personally, that's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, I think there's other there's other things we need to handle first. And there's some, and we're going to talk about it when we get to the solution because there's actually I found a couple pretty inexpensive solutions there. So cool. As far as air, there's not a whole lot of air moving down here, but we still have our friend radon there. So not a whole lot of air down there. And this is pretty interesting because crawl spaces, you know, I've had people say, oh well you you know you have to run the uh, vapor retarder there, tape it off because it's an air barrier. I've actually, it's only a sample of two, but we've done a couple houses where we didn't pour the slab till later. And we did a blower door test before and after slab, and it was oh, the same right. number. Huh. So I'm not quite convinced that the ground bleeds as much air as <laughs> some people would tend to do with their artistry of, say, a vapor retarder there. Yeah. But anyways, moving on. Thermal, obviously we have the foundation wall. We're losing heat there and we're losing heat to the ground yeah, all winter long there. that heat's getting sucked out of the house both yep. horizontally and vertically through those two areas and then last but not least the big old vapor monster coming up from the ground coming through the wall if that gets wet yep and we have potentially some cold surfaces happening right there which cold surfaces and, mean condensation and here yep right and it doesn't mean only cold places. Remember, we went to the house right literally down the street, and when you pulled the baseboard off, oh, yeah. there was a bunch of mold. That's right. Down yeah. there. Even on a slab on grade style house. Even on house. a slab on grade style house. So yep. it happens. So moving on. The solution. Let's start on the outside. <clears throat> Thermally. You can put insulation here. 
and I show it as such. But what that really is, is that is a water management system. This is a protection for a waterproof barrier here that comes, and you want to hook the top of the footing. Yep. You want to make sure you get that part there and shed that water off of there so no water can get into the wall system. Remember we talked about that. They actually make a, uh, it's probably about a one inch square um, bentonite cube that you can put there. Yeah. So when it gets water, it'll expand. You could also do it in the keyway area. I've seen that. Yep. Bentonite is a uh, naturally, uh, it's kind of like a clay yep. uh, that expands when it gets wet. And typically, not typically, sometimes you'll see a keyway, meaning there's there's a little, here I can draw with my fingers. There you go. Uh, there's a little uh, cut in this bottom footing here that's called a key. And often it's just a two by four that's set in the form so that when they pull that, it allows this concrete up here to key into that keyway. And so by putting a bentonite strip in there, it helps that coal joint not be a source of water moving. It's a good detail. Bentonite's kind of expensive though. Yep. Uh, and but our good friends at Polyguard. That's make right. Blue barrier too. That's right. And that's a great option for that joint as well, for that coal joint. And I do want to mention that uh, Steve kind of glossed over it, but that, that insulation layer, there's a bunch of different options for drainage mats in there as well. And we'll get into that in future build sciences, all the different options yep. and, and pieces for that. But suffice to say, we want to make sure that water is cascading down that foundation and that we don't have a hydrostatic pressure. We don't want that bathtub effect with our basement. Or, or think about if you were in the, uh, you were giving your kids a bath and you put this cup down in there, we don't want our foundation to be that cup that's having to resist those forces of hydrostatic pressure and keeping those out. So by putting a dimple mat with an air yep. gap, basically, in front of that, it's allowing that water to get out of there. There you go. You're pretty good at drawing on that screen, I gotta say, yeah. Steve. And the other thing about this insulation, we call it insulation, but the other thing, when I label the drawing, I actually call it a protective mat, mm -hmm. right? Because the most important job that that's doing is it's protecting that waterproofing that's, right. that's up against the foundation. So when you're backfilling rocks and stuff, they're not chipping it, they're not wrecking it. That's the outside, keep the wall nice and dry. Mm -hmm. If we keep the wall nice and dry and we do that, understand that our vapor traveling through here has been minimized. Big time. Right, because we take the water away. Best thing you can do with water in a building, get rid of it, mm -hmm. right? So moving on to the inside here, um, the what vapor does squeak by and reaches that first condensing surface, well, we wanna warm it up. So we put in some insulation. Mm -hmm. And that wants to be an insulation that's typically not air permeable as well as hydrophobic. We don't want it to, if it got wet, we don't want it to cause a problem. That's right. Right. So a lot of the insulations there are like a polyiso or a spray foam would work there. Um, but there's a, a number of different. Close cell in particular. Close cell, rock wool, there's a bunch there. And then for added insulation, you know, if you're gonna finish the room and put a two by four framed or a two by six framed wall there, then adding, you know, just an unfaced bat there. So moisture is not a bad thing. Letting that moisture travel into the room and then dealing with it in there is a perfectly viable solution mm -hmm. and one that I subscribe to. I would agree. Yeah, right? we don't wanna see a vapor barrier down there on that wall. But the other thing that we want to do, because of we, we talked earlier, we want to make sure we put sill sealer underneath that wood mm -hmm. plate. And we want to thermally, or from a um, moisture perspective, uncouple that wall from the slab. That's right. That's a capillary break. It's a bit of an insulation break. It's a good cheap detail. Gotcha. And then taking that insulation down, turning the corner, and in here, I show an option of four inches, but you can run two inches. Again, climate dependent, how you tune this. Mm -hmm. And then of course, we have our smart vapor retarder. Um, some people choose to put it under the foam. I put it on top of the foam. And I do that because if you put it underneath the foam and you get concrete underneath the foam, the 
foam will float up <laughs> in the concrete. We actually had that happen That's on a, a job. Mess. That's where I learned to put it on the top. But some guys, they still put it below. And then lastly, a perimeter drain. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's an argument. Do we put it on the inside? Do we put it on the outside? I've had projects where we've had a lot of water. I put it through both, mm -hmm. and we'll put a pipe in the footing yeah. at different intervals and just basically take the whole um, hydrostatic pressure. And then those could be attached to a sump pump, which would be, uh, you know, in this basement here, a pit yep. that's lower. There would be a pump to pump it out. If it was a walkout uh, situation where the grade changed, you could also what we call daylight those, take those pipes with gravity to the outside if that's an option. Gotcha. And also remember, notice there's a stone pad here. A lot mm -hmm. of times guys will just carry it here, but that's to stop any migration of water yeah. north of that stone pad. You really want to get that stone into that pipe. You don't want to go up. And that pipe, some of the guys will use that also as a way to capture the radon. Yep. And then they'll grab it at the sump pump and they'll exit it out there. Mm -hmm. But, And again, that is for a basement and a crawl space, That's right. just based on distance. A crawl space should be basically a short basement. That's all it is. Love it, Steve. Next up, we got number three. We're talking about pier foundations, and we're talking about insulated concrete forms. That being said, like our friend Joe Stieberg would say, it's not rocket science. It's build science. Don't forget. We got quizzes. We got booklets after this, so the fun doesn't stop at the vibe board. That's right. So at the end of each episode of Build Science 301, you're going to have the opportunity to take a five-question quiz. Answer all five of those right, and then go through all 11 modules on Build Science 301, and our team's going to send you a certificate that says that you passed Build Science 301. And we have that for 101 and 201. Right, Steve? There we go. Don't forget, this is totally free. There is no charge. I think you should really take the time and make sure you get recognized for your efforts and your time. Get that certificate. This is a really big deal, and this is a good foundation for the rest of your career. Build Science 301, a Build Original Series brought to you by Anderson Windows and Doors, Arklin, and Huber Engineered Woods.